Hello my lovely friends! Today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a video that I hope will help you um, get over a hurdle in your life that at one point or another everybody has either been through or will go through or is going through right now. And if that is you, then just know one thing that every single thing in life that happens to you um, teaches you something and you can take something from it and learn something from that and then in that way by taking those life lessons you're going to be growing and you're going to be becoming a better person and you're going to get stronger you're going to get um, wiser and you are going to just grow and develop as a person so in today's talk i wanted to um, discuss how to get over a breakup and like i said at one point or another every one of us will experience some kind of heartache and whether it's through a breakup or through um, getting hurt in some way by somebody that you loved at one point or another you will experience heartache. And in this case, we're gonna focus on just breakups and specifically how to get over a breakup. The first thing is um, to let it all out. After a breakup, whether you broke up with somebody or that person broke up with you, there's a lot of emotions in you. There's a lot of feelings in you. You might feel sad, you might feel happy. If you broke up with somebody because you feel relieved and that, that's what I mean. Whatever the emotion is, anger, um, you might have felt betrayed. It's important to let it out, but let it out reasonably. Don't go doing something stupid that you're going to regret, uh, but do it in a way that helps you heal with it. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're dealing with a breakup is not letting their feelings out. And automatically they just switch their feelings off and they're like, I'm fine, it's like it never happened. When somebody does that, it makes them feel um, different. So they might do something that their inside doesn't agree with. And because they've switched off those feelings, they're not aware of how they really feel and so when they turn their feelings back on the repercussions might be greater than the actual feelings of pain that they would have experienced first so just let it out cry if you need to um, maybe write yourself a letter that helps you pour all your emotions out whatever it is that you need to do just let those feelings out but don't stay in this phase for long because you don't want to get stuck here. It's important to let the feelings out um, but not have them take over your life. So for some people it might be a couple of days, for some people it might be a couple of weeks. It depends on you, it depends on how your breakup was and um, it really it's all dependent on yourself. But it's important to still go through that phase. The second step to getting over a breakup is to be realistic. And what I mean by that is, yes, there's in any relationship, there's going to be good times and there's going to be bad times. And sometimes when we break up with a person or when somebody breaks up with us, we, um, if we're in denial, we try to focus on the good stuff and we're like, wow, like, why did I even break up with this person? Or why did this person break up with me? Because we had fun together, we did lots of fun things, we uh, trusted each other. Whatever fun times you had, whatever good times you had, they're always going to be there. But don't focus on all those good times because you're going to miss out the big picture. And that's, in that relationship, there was a lack of something. Whether on your end or on the other person's end, for some reason, that breakup happened. And you have to realize that in order for you to be able to move on, you have to look at the whole scene. You have to look at the good side and you have to look at the bad side and you have to think about how this is going to benefit you and your life later on. So don't just focus on the good stuff because the good stuff will always be there, but it's the bad stuff that 
made your relationship um, weak and that ended your relationship. So remember to think about those bad things that happened to you and I'm not saying dwell over them, but it's important to be realistic about what happened. So when you look at the realistic picture, it helps you deal with the pain and realize that this relationship probably wasn't meant to be. The third step is to talk about it. Now this can sometimes be hard, especially for somebody like myself that I love helping people, but I have trouble opening up myself and um, telling people about my problems. I just feel like I don't want to burden them with my problems because I know everybody has their own issues to deal with, but it really does help to talk it over with somebody. And in my case, um, when I do need somebody to talk to, I always turn to my mom. And at first it was hard because I felt like she couldn't understand how I felt and she couldn't understand what I was going through, but I underestimated her, um, her wisdom and her ability to relate to me, even though there is such a um, generational, like generation gap. But she, whenever I talk to her, she always makes me feel better. She always, um, she knows me so well that she helps me understand why I'm feeling things I'm feeling and why things happen that I might not be able to see for myself. So it's nice to get an outsider point of view. That being said, don't listen to everything everybody says because they weren't in that relationship. They weren't there when, um, during your most intimate moments, uh, during you know every single day things. So take what they say and apply it to the to your relationship the way you need to apply it. Um, but it is important to talk, uh, talk it over with somebody. So whether, in my case, like it's my mom, um, or if you have some kind of sibling that you're really close with, or if you have a friend that you can confide in, it's, uh, it's great to have somebody that you can talk to and that it can give you a great perspective and can just listen to you. The fourth step is to keep busy. And I always say that busy people are happy people. I don't, I don't think I'm the only one that says that, but uh, it is true. Try to do things that make you happy. And when we're in a relationship with somebody, that relationship takes a lot of time out of your personal life. So when you break up with somebody or when somebody breaks up with you, that gives you the opportunity to indulge in the things that you love and that you weren't able to uh, devote your time to because you're busy devoting your time to that other person. So take this time to do things that you love. Perhaps start a hobby or take up a hobby that you used to have. Or read. Love reading. Reading is great. Um, it's great to just escape into another world, uh, watch movies, shows, um, cook. Cooking is so calming and Baking is really, it just helps you, uh, you know, put your mind into something else. And so just be productive with your time. Think of what can you do to make yourself happy because you deserve to be happy. And now is a chance that you get to do the things that you love for yourself. So the fifth step is to step into your new chapter. Take this as an opportunity to begin a new journey. Uh, when one door closes, a million other doors and windows open. So take that step into that new chapter. Embrace it. Um, change things about yourself that you've wanted to change. And maybe this relationship made you realize that you're not perfect and there needs some work to be done on you and that's okay nobody's perfect and I think the whole point of life is to um, embrace what you have and also work on developing yourself as a better person so take what you learned from that relationship and apply it to your new um, to your new you and that could be a great way to just See what else is out there. What other opportunities can you um, dive into? And I like to also try to change something physical about me, not because 
um, you know, I want to change my whole self, but because I feel like it gives me a little bit of a, bo a boost. And uh, for example, I usually like to get my hair done. It doesn't have to be a dramatic change, just something small, something to make you feel a little bit different, a little bit um, newer. And uh, just be your own cheerleader, which sounds very corny, but it's true. It's like, you know what? You're not going to fail from this one thing. Like I said at the beginning, the things that happen to us in life, um, we can the way that we can deal with them is by taking whatever lessons we've learned from that situation and applying it into the future. So remember your relationship fondly, but remember that it didn't work for some reason. And look at the reasons that it didn't work and see if there's anything you can do to better yourself in a new relationship in that way. And um, so those are the five steps that I that I think work, really work very well when trying to get over a breakup. That they certainly helped me when I when I've had to deal with heartache. And I'm not saying that it's as easy as one, two, three, four, five to get over a breakup, but it's nice to you know break it up into those little phases and try to focus on that um, aspect of your life one step at a time. And eventually you will get over. Time does heal all. And just stay strong, stay motivated, stay true to yourself. And remember that there are people in the world that will love you and you will love them. And they'll love you for all that you are. And it's important to have just a positive outlook on life and on relationships.